Listener discretion advised. Now, here's Loveline with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. Hey, it's Loveline. <laughs> Let me get the phone number out. 1-800-LOVE-191. Yes, Drew, we're doing a freaking radio show. <laughs> How yeah. much of that went out of the airway? I don't know. You didn't, didn't hear, hear us talking? No. Okay, good. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. They were just Tell me what happened. They were pumping music in here. We had no idea they were going on the air. Well, should I say that again, or did you just say it? I think you just said it, true. All right, facts number 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Carolla. He is Dr. Drew. He's a board-certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Tonight we have Imperial Drag. They will be dragged in here in about 10 minutes. They will join us. I went to uh, high school with the drummer from Imperial Drag. No kidding. Absolutely. Eric Skodes. Naturally, he's not here. Why do the guys look so much younger than you? I've had a hard life. Yeah, let me tell you about the pampered Let me tell you about the pampered life of the rock and roll star. People, you know, peeling grapes, uh, being uh, fanned with uh, ostrich feathers and whatnot. Meanwhile, let me tell you about the uh, stark reality of the carpet cleaner. Uh, soil bust and uh, and uh, other chemicals floating up in the in the mist. That's why I'm aged. That's what happened to my brain, Drew. I sucked up too many carpet chemicals. You recovered from your uh, roller coaster experience? Yeah, I did, but then I ate too many pancakes tonight. Yeah. So I don't feel good so again. So that's got you tonight. Huh? <laughs> At least it's not your brain tonight. No, it's just my belly. Yeah. All right, so, Drew, I watched that tape. Oh, yeah, the killer sperm tape. Right. right. The learning channel. Absolutely. Right. You watched the whole thing? Absolutely. I, I couldn't watch the whole thing. Oh, I learned about the how the the uh, chimps court each other. Basically, that, and and I felt better, actually, because as it turns out, in nature, in the animal world, in the animal kingdom, they get it over with sexually. Right. Uh, and the woman doesn't even know what happened. She's like, uh, you know, um, catching fish or something. The guy sneaks up behind her. He gives her a couple quick how do you do's, and he's gone. Right. And more women ought to watch this nature film. They don't know how good they have it with a good five minutes of love I give them. <laughs> All right, Drew, you ready to get some calls? Yeah, let's go. Yeah, anyway, but it turns out to be true with the sperm. What? Well, they showed the sperm. Yeah, they showed that there's some sperm that sort of stay behind and don't go after the egg and seem to have the capacity to damage other advancing sperm from other people, and other males. And they lock tails and right. form this A web. This big, you know in soccer, when they get the free kick and all those guys stand there and they cover their nuts and they turn their head? Right. That's what it looks like. It's kind it? of that thing, except yeah. for the, the soccer ball would represent the sperm of like the neighbor guy who was right. also banging your girlfriend right and they try not to let it score but once in a while it gets through and the crowd goes nuts all right you ready drew yeah you got to call mm-hmm. uh-huh. frank 26 you're on love line yes good evening gentlemen good evening frank okay um <clears throat> my situation here is that uh i have its question for the doctor mm-hmm. hopefully he can help mm-hmm. um well a couple weeks ago i was electrocuted by an electric fence mm-hmm. by accident well kind of and uh Right now, I what have, happened? I mean, what what were you doing? Climbing I electric? really can't say. Um, I well, I was a, I was uh, engaging in some illegal activity, and I accidentally got caught in an electrified fence, and I didn't go to the hospital because you know I didn't feel that bad. I mean, I got the hell jolted out of me, but I didn't feel it was severe enough to go to a hospital because you know I thought it was you know I was afraid that maybe the police would have been notified or something like Did that. Did you get any but, burns? Uh, a couple right on the side of my ribs. They're not bad though. I put some cream on there, but it's just the jolt of electricity. Did you I lose got a bad headache afterwards? Did you lose consciousness? Yes. No. No. Actually, no. I didn't because I took I was I took ice cold shower afterwards. But immediately know. upon electrocution, did you lose consciousness? Uh, I just felt real dizzy and sick. I was okay. nauseous. I threw uh, up. Okay. Frank. Yeah. I'm, I'm dying to know. What were you doing? Uh, I, all I can say it's it was attempted burglary, but unsuccessful. Yeah, was this a residence or some sort of, uh, you know, official government building? No, it was just a business. I really can't say on the grounds I might incriminate myself. <laughs> but uh, other than that, I just felt some nausea afterwards, some vomiting. I took a lot of aspirin, and but the, you know, I feel better now. But now, I, you know, I can't get an erection no matter how good. I try. I've done some good. Good, we're glad. Oh no, that's... the defense worked perfectly. It went right for the penis. You see what you get, Frank? Well, trying to break in and steal th- steal something, weren't you? Well, the other, there was other guys involved too. I wasn't the only one. 
Oh, okay. Well, that makes it all right. Just as long as you had a gang. I've done several things to arouse myself for the past week and a half, and no matter how hard I try, I cannot get an erection. Well, you, you, is, is that possible? Does that electrocution have anything to do oh, with that? Oh, of course it does. No, that's God's wrath right. there, Drew. Right. Just, just, just directly, without the electrocution. That you would have had is, that anyway. Let me oh. tell you about the uh, swift sword of justice the Almighty wields, Frank. He doesn't need any uh, jury of your peers. He goes right to the penis. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, God. Oh, yes, Frank. There's no peels. There's no Rusty the Bailiff. Oh. That's right. Little zap like a bug zapper right to the schwanz. But, but that's, that's how the that's Lord works. Suggestions. How can I, how can I, get, what can I do for some treatment? Repent. Uh, that's how you can get it fixed. I, I'm not sure that there would necessarily be treatment, frankly. I, I, I you know, usually if you're going to get nerve damage, it's usually associated with burn. Uh, and if there was no burn, and, and the burn tends to go to wherever there's sort of an extremity. That certainly could, could go there. Uh, could go to the genitals. But, but you don't, you're not describing any kind of burn. It's and, just a, just a burn of the outline of, of the fence was on the side of my ribs. Yeah, yeah, I right understand. By my gut. I understand. That That's okay though. I understand. I understand. It wasn't, I don't think it's a bad burn. You know, I just put some cream on it and sprayed some yeah, stuff on it. Yeah, I understand. For the stinging. But, it seems to me there's got to be somehow related to the electrocution. I, I suspect these kinds of things, without, without any kind of soft tissue injury, typically get better. Well, it could be the emotional trauma. It could be the trauma. Could yeah, be... but I've done several things to arouse myself. I've been to a topless bar. Frank, I... Frank, yeah. it, if it's going to come back, it's going to come back in the next few weeks. If it doesn't, you really need to see a neurologist to see if there's anything else that needs to be evaluated or anything else that could be done. I'm guessing God gave Frank's... Penis, a sentence of maybe, uh, oh, could be six to eight. You oh, never really? know. He oh, yeah. take that long to get back. But with good behavior, he may let the penis, he may parole the penis early. Maybe put one of those, uh, homing collars around it and then have the, uh, you know, parole officer that the penis has to report to. He doesn't understand that is God's wrath. I know I, I say I'm an atheist, but I do believe in the Lord in certain matters, matters of the penis. When it has to do with electrical fence and a penis, all of a sudden I'm a believer. And I'm spreading and crime, the good, and crime. I'm spreading the good word, aren't I, Drew? Yeah, you took quite, uh, quite a job. All right, Mitchell, 29, you're on Love Line. Hey, I got a question for Doctor Drew. Yeah, Mitchell. Uh, yeah, I've been with this girl for five years, and we're scheduled to get married this August 22nd. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, I'd do anything to prove I loved her, and she's like, uh, one day mentions, well, if you love me, and the only way I'll marry you is basically if I have sex with her best friend while she watches. That's um, Adam. That is. That's good. No. What? That's beyond ridiculous. Yeah, it's exactly. But I've been with her for five years, and I try to explain to her. And I mean, I'm 29. We're both we're both professionals, um, but she insists. All right. She's a professional nut job, Mitchell. You're not getting married yet. Yep. You haven't gotten married yet, have you? No, not yet. Okay, this is trouble. She wants to watch you have sex with her friend and and take photos of. It's, it's ridiculous. I, don't know, I wonder if he's, she's like gonna. That's just bizarre. Well, it could be part of some sort of uh, yeah, prenup or something. Right, it's some kind of extortion routine here. <laughs> Mitchell. Uh, yeah. So, something's wrong with her. Well, you, I don't know, though. You know, I, I've been with her for so long, and, you know, she was uh, married once before me, and she said her husband used to beat her, and I, I, I thought about it, and I talked to a psychiatrist at, at, the, at the school, and they said maybe this had something to do with it, some sort of aggression. Well, it's a self-esteem thing. It's it's more than that. I mean, when people are are abused, by, you said it was her father who did this. Uh, her yeah. boyfriend. Her boyfriend. How about how about before uh, that? Yeah. Her family. Uh, her. I don't know. She. Her family wasn't the greatest to her uh, right. mentally. Like I mean, that's know, deprived uh, her. Okay, right. let me explain what's going on, Drew. Since you seem to be fumbling, because uh, Lord knows if it doesn't come out of an almanac, you're lost. <laughs> I'm going to explain what this means in the street. She's used to abuse. That's all she knows. That's right. And what is the ultimate form of abuse for any any couple? Watching your partner get it on with your best friend. I yeah. mean, that is a fate worse than death. That is uh, worse than the belt your dad smacked yeah, but, you with. But, wow, don't <laughs> give me what. That's what it is. It is, but it's... She's inflicting abuse on herself. That's yeah, all she knows. She's it's... using Mitchell and his junk... It's, and her good friend to inflict the ultimate abuse on herself. It, it's too crazy, though, to think that she would think that up for herself. There's something missing here. That's why. What's her friend look like, Mitchell? Uh, her friend's uh, uh, Latino. Uh huh. Um, I can't really describe her. It's got she's got big boobies. Okay, Mitchell, listen. 
Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Listen, you just go good or bad. You know, I go, what's your friend look like? You good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We don't have to get into scalp texture and whatnot. Okay. Let, let us talk to her. Where you is she? Speak to her? Yeah. Let's straighten her out. <laughs> All right. Hold on. What's her name? Oh. Hey, hold on a second. Hold on. We rarely get this, by the way. Most people don't have the phone number of their fiance. Well, they won't. She's like, no. Oh, okay. I spoke too soon. Come on, Mitchell. She's right there. All right, Mitchell, turn up the radio. Let me try something right now. Okay, turn up the radio. There's going to be a delay here, so. All right. Okay. Uh, and what should Mitchell do? Like cover the phone or something? Right, cover the, the party speaks into. All right, Mitchell, try not to. Mitchell, sit down. Take okay. your shoes off. What's All her right. name? What's her name? Her name's uh, Heather. Uh, okay. <laughs> Heather. Wait a minute. Let me add some effect here. Heather. This is the voice of Adam Carolla calling from Loveline Radio. You have one chance at sanity. That is to pick up the phone that Mitchell hands you and talk to me and the doctor guy. And we will free you from the chains that bind you, the chains of insanity that bind your cerebellum. Am I right, Drew? No. <laughs> talk to him now. All I'm right. talking to you. All right. See, it worked. <laughs> a little reverb goes a long way. <laughs> All right. Now, listen. You you honestly want to see Mitchell have sex with your best friend? Yeah, I do. Uh-huh. Why? Well, it's not just me. She wants to do it, too. But why would you want to start a marriage that way? Well, I don't know. She kind of talked me into it. She talked you into it? Yes, yeah, she did. I tell Bonehead to turn the radio down now. Okay. Okay. Wait. She, she has to tell him. He's only going to hear it in six seconds. Well, no, there I told go. her to tell him. All it's, right. It's down. All right, let's get to the bottom of this. What happened to you? What do you mean? Something happened to you that you would request this of Mitchell. I I don't know. I just, I don't know. <laughs> what, what was your childhood like? It was pretty bad. What happened? Just a lot of things. Like what? A lot of things I don't want to say. Like what? I don't want to talk about it. All right, let me take some guesses. You, 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 there, there are two guesses, and both are right. Uh, I'm going to start with abuse. Yes, what and, kind? Uh, incestual abuse. Yeah, sexual, sexual abuse. Sexual abuse. And what yes. else? Probably a little physical abuse also, I suspect. Okay, well, I count uh, sexual abuse as physical all abuse, right, Drew. All right, all right. Okay, you're right. Okay, all right. So the only kind of news you understand is bad news. I mean... Or is there any kind of relationship you understand as a bad relationship? Yeah, too? pretty much all my relationships have gone downhill. Right, so you, you intentionally steer them off a cliff. In fact, the, the, the fact that she wants so diligently to drive this one into the ground suggests that maybe Mitchell's not such a bad guy and this isn't such a bad relationship. But she can't tolerate that, so she has to find a way to sabotage it. And the closer they get to the actual nuptials, the more, more, impossible the more she is. needs yeah. to sabotage the relationship. All right, you understand what's happening now, right? Uh-huh. Do you? I. You could be right. I, I don't know. Don't yeah. make me go back to the reverb button. <laughs> you know what's going on. You're sabotaging it, just like you sabotaged your last one. What would you do in your last one? Oh, my last one, he cheated on me. Uh-huh. So he was good. That was when, that was when it, you... it was with my best friend, though. Oh, and, and that was a private relationship. You, you stuck out like crazy, right? You kept going back for him? Yeah, actually, I did. So yeah, that's a good relationship for her. Right. That's one that she wants to continue in. I'm belching up pancakes now, Drew. I but I, I didn't blame it on my friend at all. I'm Mitchell, I mean, uh, what's her name? What's your name? Sarah. Sarah. No, my name's Heather. Heather. Oh, Heather. Heather. <laughs> Heather. Did listen. You, did you put mustard on those pancakes? I what, just what is that? Down. I just belch up some. No, you know what? I put mustard. I had a hamburger. <laughs> I had spicy mustard on my hamburger. I just belch some. Uh, Hamburger juice up into Drew's face and it hit the fan and went went along the Gulf Stream there. All right, I listen. For pancakes to smell like that, my God. Heather, uh -huh. Heather, you understand what you're doing? You're sabotaging, right? Please understand yeah, what this yeah, impulse okay. is. All right, so instead of it, go get some, if you do, you really want to marry him? Do you really want a good relationship? Yeah, I do. All right, then don't sabotage it. Forget about this nonsense. Hang in with it. Re realize friend. these instincts are very destructive. And any instinct you have to ruin this relationship or demean him in some way are really those old instincts to try to get back into relationships that are abusive. Okay, and apologize to Mitchell for me because I know the guy feels bad. He was all revved up. <sighs> all right, now we have Imperial Drag. He's just slid into the studio. 
fresh on the heels of a uh, heavy and sick relationship. Drew, don't belch into the mic. Roger Manning and Eric Dover, both from Imperial Drag. Hi, guys. That Hello. was your belch, wasn't it? <laughs> well, I don't know. I think it was a breakfast burrito. <laughs> Did you guys smell that mustard that came out of I me? I think it was trick burping. <laughs> I mean, I was, I was expecting maple syrup or something, but no. I, I forgot to say that I made myself a hamburger before I made the pancakes. Before. I'm really, I do have, I, now I know I have well, an eating disorder. You do have an eating disorder. Yeah, okay. Did you, did you, would you feel like puking right now or? Yeah. Yeah. You want me to do that? Mm, you probably will anyway. All right, let's talk to Imperial Trey. Yeah. Hi, fellas. Hello. Hi. <laughs> now, uh, as I said on the air earlier, there's a friend of mine who's in your band, Eric Skodas. Well, I shouldn't call him a friend of mine, but I knew him from high school. Yeah. He was a weirdo back then. He used then. to laugh yeah, at your jokes. <laughs> That's why I wanted him in tonight. <laughs> Something about you being the class clown, I don't know. I was the class clown. Oh. I had to uh I had to blow one of the judges in order to get the crown, but it was worth it. And I've made something of my class clown status. You know, let me say this. Many guys get the class clown status and they go on and do nothing. They become doctors and lawyers and all that kind of crap. Scientists. But the fine made. living you've made, Adam. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> I love that lucky charms voice you. <laughs> All right, now you guys are going out on tour with uh, Alanis Morissette, uh, May 31st, right? For three weeks. Yeah, do you know her? Not yet. How how was it arranged? Is she Does she dig your scene, or is it just one of these How is it arranged? Deals? Well, her father and my father <laughs> said the, uh, they planned the wedding. They're from um, the old country? Exactly. And then the dowry was pretty insane, too, yeah. Uh, well, no. what I mean is, is, is I, I, I never, I actually... I, I'm interested to know because I hear about bands hooking up all the time, going out, uh, opening uh, for another band or what have you. And I and I always wondered, did she hear you and go, hey, I dig that? Or did you hear her and go, hey, well, I dig managers, her? The managers, or did the managers the know you? Yeah. I mean, we'll give you the skinny. I mean, basically, all the biz people, you know, try to persuade her this would be a good idea. But at the end of the day, she hears the CD and goes, you know. I think this is the new greatest thing ever, and, and she invited us on for three weeks. Really? You know, obviously we knew about her. I mean, we were fans already, but this our record just came out two weeks ago. So so it's kind of flattering that then absolutely. she digs you. Yeah, guys. absolutely. And they, I guess you got to figure, are you guys going to be good for the kind of crowd that she draws? And I guess uh, the answer is yes. Or, no, the answer is we'll see. We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is get ready to duck. I'm not too worried. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys got tons of dates, and we're going to get to those dates, and we're probably going to play something off the uh, CD, the self-titled CD, Imperial Drag, a little bit later on. But first, we'll just get to uh, one more phone call before we break. Shauna, 20, you're on Loveline with Imperial Drag. Oh, hi, everyone. Hey. Hello. Hey. Um, I have a problem, of course. Um, I have been put on oxygen, and um, it's hard to meet guys. Because they really don't understand, you know, what it is and stuff. What's the medical condition? Um, I have cystic fibrosis. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and so, um, I have to be in a wheelchair if I'm going to walk anywhere. Any distance. Far. Right, right. And um, it's like guys really don't understand, and they won't even approach me or anything. And I'd say, you know, I'm pretty cute and stuff, so Shana. I don't know, you know... Shana, let me explain it. something. Huh? It's just that they feel guilty because when a guy goes up to a girl, they don't know. They go up with the intent of trying to bone them, really. Uh-huh. And when they see you with the oxygen and the, and the tubes and the wheels and everything, they feel they feel badly. No, they have compassion. No, they... <laughs> huh? Yeah, they, they might actually feel something, well, what which, I mean... which already startles them. <laughs> <laughs> they feel bad making a play for somebody who looks like they're, you know, got the, they could the hurt Grim them. Reapers that they could behind them. them. That they could hurt them. Right. Okay. But you, you know got... what, Chuck, on a bigger, on a larger scale, American society deals with illness and death and dying and trauma, traumatic, you know, injuries uh-huh. p- very poorly. I mean, people with illness are sort of put aside. You know, you're not allowed. You, exactly. you, you know, you you can't be part of the mainstream. You're not. You're, you know, people don't accept you into the mainstream. It's ridiculous. Well, what's uh, yeah. cystic fibrosis? I it's mean, a, how it's bad a, is that? It's, it's a bad lung disease. It's a chronic, progressive lung yeah, disease. Yeah, I'm here to get a transplant. Oh, really? Oh, do, really? Do they yeah. do bo- one lung? Heart or? lung. You have a heart, heart and lung. You have a heart lung or just lung? Two lungs. Yeah, lung transplant. Oh. And I'm here from Ohio. Yeah. Wow. So you're, 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 it's like I'm totally out of my element. Yeah. And. 
you know, I'm a person, a woman. I want to meet guys. But but Shauna, when, when, I, I think you, I you think got bigger it, fish to fry. I, but I but I think no. I mean, that she's a 20 year old. And these are her concerns. You can understand when people have chronic illness and they're young people. This is what they concern themselves with: is how they're going to continue their interpersonal relations, how they're going to be attractive to other people. Same concerns if you didn't have the medical illness. But, it's even right. it's compounded by having that. All right, but. When do you know whether you, you have to wait for someone to get in a motorcycle accident before you get your lungs? Or uh, pretty much. You just you're on, you're on a beeper. Yeah. Yeah, she's standing by. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, how fast do they have to do it? A few hours. Yeah. She she you probably are you near the hospital? Yeah, yeah. I'm at um yeah. THC. Which which city are you in? Golden Valley. We're we're in Los Angeles. Where where are you? Uh, Minneapolis. Minneapolis. Okay. Mm. Um, wow, that is that is just you never heard of that. Well, I guess if I'd sat down and thought about it, I would have figured <laughs> that's how it works. So, but let me just let me just backtrack. You it's, go look, near. It's wonderful that you can get this, by the way. It, it can be tremendously successful. You successful. go you go near the facility that's going to do the operation, and you sort of hang in the vicinity. Right. And you basically wait. Mm -hmm. And then I basically live at a hospital. Right. Some guy gets in an accident, and right. they go, "We got a good set." Right. And they beep you, and right. they zip you over there, and you go, and they do it. And is it how successful is this usually? This, this, is, this is more and more, uh, more and more increasingly common procedure with increasing success. I mean, Chana sounds like a great candidate for it. But let, let's get back to what Chana has to deal with as, a, right, as an American with a chronic illness who who really looks different. That's really what people react to. She, well, I Shana, normal except for the hoses. Right. I mean, she yeah. has, she has, well, she just has intranasal, you know, you have canals going in your nose, right? Right. Right. All right. And, and can you no come? other outside tube things. All right. Shana. I, I think, yeah. I think if, if you could overcome the initial impact of the visual, what? Hold drill. Oh, you want to put it on hold? Relax. Okay. Right. <laughs> Look at us. We've been working together for six months. You've we never have done no that. No idea. You've I know. I know. But I, Shauna's a real interesting story. Right. And, and so we're going to put Shauna on hold. And then poor guys from Imperial Drag come in here, right? When so, we're so ready for anything. Wheelchair and they got tubes and everything. But don't worry. We'll have some. We'll line up. Sherry, get some uh, 15 year old with some kind of uh, shanker on his penis or something <laughs> for the guys in the 11 o'clock oh, hour. Yes, please. <laughs> and we'll be back with more Imperial Drag and Shauna. Hundred L O V E one nine one fax number three one zero eight five four forty four fifty five. I'm Adam Carolla. He's Doctor Drew. We have Roger and Eric, both from Imperial Drag. Four guys came in here at the tail end of a of a pretty heavy call, and then walked right into the uh, the eye of the storm with uh, who was it? Shauna. Yeah. Yeah. So we're we're going to get back to Shauna. We left Shauna. She has cystic fibrosis. She's in a wheelchair. She's uh, at the Holiday Inn nearest to the hospital, and she basically has a pager, and she's waiting for some guy to uh, buy it on a scooter so she can get in there and get those lungs. Shauna? Yeah. Now, let me ask you an honest question. Okay. Are you putting a curse on anybody, or are you just waiting? <laughs> uh, no. Okay. Not recently, anyway. Can they do guy lungs? Mm -hmm. Guy lungs? Uh, Dude lungs? I guess. I don't know. Do lungs vary in size that much? I mean, you know, we yeah. had we yeah. had Pamela Anderson in here the other night. It wouldn't seem like that would match up with most most women. <laughs> those weren't her lung. Oh, the, oh, oh those were. She bought those. It's a lung job. <laughs> so, Shauna, in the mean, in the interim, I mean, this could be tomorrow morning, or it could be a year from tomorrow morning, right? Right. I've already been here a year. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I've been waiting that long. Goddamn helmet laws. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Shauna, I mean, you sound like a terrific person, and it really is just the issue of the the people being so frightened by any of the trappings of a medical illness yeah, right. that if you could get past that and just get them to talk to you and connect with you as a person, and particularly with your sort of, you seem to be very assertive and seem to have a you know a, a willingness to to get to know people and get involved with with, in, with other people. I, uh -huh. I think I think it would. Especially it would, guys my age. Yeah, I think it'd be very quick. Uh, it'd be very quick for you to to sort of develop relationships, but I I don't see it happening in a bar. I mean, you're gonna have no, to. I can't go to a bar. Yeah, you're, you're gonna have to find ways of meeting friends and networking. <laughs> Even if a small group of friends develops, you should be able to network through that. I would think. And there's no no problem with you and sex, right? What do you mean? The, now the no, well, there is no problem. Now, no, you, no what, I can do it. <laughs> 
You'd yeah. have to. You should have to wear oxygen, but there's no problem. <laughs> yeah. um, but I could you, use a little of that oxygen now, sexually I would think, once in a while. For instance, the hospital which you're on call to would have a support group for people that are potential transplants and whatnot. Nope. Uh, or, or well, you must have a. Do, do they assign you to general pediatrician? Well, or or, um, or, 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 or an internist. I guess you're funny. I'm at like a transitional hospital. Right. Which they go through the regular hospital. I just think they they must know some resources that you could connect up with and to learn, meet people. We tried that. Uh. All right, Shana. Yes. You, uh, uh, my guess is people see the wheelchair and they think uh, no sex. All right, you probably. You basically need to make up some kind of sweatshirt or something. It'll be subtle, but something that it, in, in effect <laughs> essentially reads, uh, don't, don't be fooled by the wheelchair, I'm a woman. I mean, I, you know, I, I can know, get down with the best of them. Basically, they don't think I'm a person or something. I don't know. That, that's, that's right. how, that's how this country treats people with illness. Uh, I don't know. So, <clears throat> Shauna. Yeah. Uh, you, you're basically just going to have to, uh, ride it out, pardon the pun, and, uh, you know what can we say? No, keep keep slugging away. You're gonna. I, I have no doubt that if she keeps at it, she will connect with some people. But here's the good news: if she does find a guy, she knows he's genuine, or the sickest bastard ever to walk the earth. <laughs> Am I right, guys? I would have to agree with that. All right, so let's talk a little more about uh, Imperial Dre. Okay. This the uh, the CD. Yes, it's new. It came out two weeks ago. The kids are talking about it. Uh, some kids are. <laughs> Uh, you don't have to respond to that. I say it every time we have a musical guest in I'm here. sure you do. Uh, kids can't get enough. They're eating it like candy. Yeah. And uh, it's selling good and doing good. And you guys, uh, after you go out with uh, Alanis for a few weeks and uh, basically show her the musical ropes, you'll be going out and doing your own thing, right? That's right. And uh, we have some dates. Mm. We're going to play a song, actually, uh, from that called uh, Boy or a Girl. But uh, let me let me give a few dates of where you're going to be. Uh, I'm not going to read the clubs and everything, but they're going to be uh, in Portland, May 31st. I guess that's when you start the tour with with Atla- uh, Atlantis. Correct. <laughs> Atlantis, uh, Salt Lake City, Denver, Berkeley, Sacramento, uh, June 12th, Santa Barbara, June 15th and 16th. Oh, Los Angeles. Oh, it's a Greek. Four nights. Beautiful. You guys ever played there? Mm, I did once in Jellyfish. Oh, right. right. I was a janitor there for a weekend. It, I, I blew a guy in the parking lot. So we all have our own, our own stories. Minutes. Drew, anything at the Greek? No. He had sex with a Greek guy once, though, and that's close enough. The great Greek Zorba? He pulled the tunic right up. <laughs> June 18th and 19th, uh, I don't know where. Uh, June 20th, you'll be in Irvine. June 22nd, San Diego. And June 23rd in uh, Phoenix at the, the America West Arena. Oh, where the Suns play. God, that's yeah, big that's time. Right, isn't it? That's yeah, going to be true. great. I mean, you I, guys are going to be playing some huge venues. Well, it's good in some ways and not so good in others. I well, mean, it's not so intimate. Yeah. And it's not why you got into music, because you got into to, to go right to the crowd. But now, I want to ask you, why do you think we got into music, Adam? To sell out. Smacking hookers. <laughs> he just cuts the chase. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? Well, yeah, I think you are, actually. Uh, <laughs> All right, Roger, we are going to play a song from Imperial Drag called Boy or a Girl. The Imperial Drag, Boy or a Girl, off of the self-titled CD, Imperial Drag, and we'll be back after this. Hey, how you doing? This is Darren from Goldfinger, and you're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Mountain Dew. I mean, Dr. Drew. Oh. oh, no, that's all I could come up with in short notice. 40, <laughs> Uh, Goldfinger, love Goldfinger. Saw them at that uh, Edge Fest in Minnesota last week. I didn't tell you, we, I was just talking to uh, Eric a second ago about uh, Iggy Pop, and a, and a funny story comes to mind. Was he I, there too? No. no. What, Iggy? Yeah. Yeah, Iggy was there. Yeah. And I was supposed to bring Iggy out on stage. Right. And the way they had it is they had, like they do a lot of these festivals, they either have a revolving stage, right. so the other bands, so there's not 45 minutes between right. bands, or they sort of divide it in half. Right. They divided this one in half, and I was on the left side, and Iggy was getting all set up on the right side. And I'd, I'd come out on stage about, oh, like three times too many by that point. It was, he was the last, he was the last uh, guy of the night. Actually, Candlebox was, but it was getting late, and he was the second guy from the last. And I got out there, and I said to the to the stage manager, I said, listen, if Iggy's ready to go, tell me. And if he's not, tell me, because I'm not going to go out there like I did the last five times and go, ladies and gentlemen, Iggy Pop! 
Nothing. And nothing. Crickets. All right. So he said, no, don't worry. He'll be ready to go. So I go out there and I yell, my ladies and gentlemen, Iggy Pop, and Iggy's in his trailer doing God knows what. Oh. Okay. So I go back. I screw it. I'm never going out there again. And about five minutes later, the road manager or the uh, stage manager grabs me again. He goes, listen, you got to get back out there because Iggy's ready to go now and you got to bring Iggy Pop out. And I said, I got hit with a freaking Birkenstock the last time I was out there and a roll of nickels. I'm not going back out there. I, I sort of wore out my welcome. <laughs> But they said, go back out there and bring out Iggy Pop. I said, all right, I'm doing it, but I'm doing it on Iggy's mic, and I'm waiting until Iggy's, like, actually up on stage with me, so I know he's ready to go. So here comes Iggy with the entourage, with the rest of the band, and they're doing that, like, spinal tap thing. You know, we're ready to go. They're pumped. You know, they're like a fighter coming into Caesar's Palace, you know. Iggy's throwing, you know, he's got his shirt off, he's wearing his leather, and he's throwing punches in the air. And I come out there, and I hit the stage about the same time Iggy does, and I start to head toward the mic, and Iggy, all 130 pounds, and basically, like, knocks me over and grabs the mic and just goes right into it. Oh. <laughs> so I basically made an ass of myself, like, uh, two Again. times within five minutes. That's all right. Not setting any records for that either. All right, all right. Hey, but let's this is Iggy Pop, this... and you're listening to Love Line. <laughs> Yeah, he was not that subdued, by the way, when he hit the stage. But uh, he put on a good show, and I got the hell out of there. We're here with Imperial Drag. We're here with Eric and Roger, both from Imperial Drag. And they left my buddy Eric Skoda's back at Sorry. home. We've had two chances on this show to have people that I know on. One is when we had Mad TV, and there there was like five cast members, and I knew two of them well from uh, the old Groundlings comedy days. Three of them came out, the three that I didn't know. And this time I said, I said to the guy, I said, bring Eric out, get Eric out here. I'd love to say hi to Eric again. Not, not that I don't love you two, but absolutely. Let's face it. We didn't go to high, well, we didn't go to high school together. There's some rejection here. Right? No, no, no. You guys will do. <laughs> <laughs> don't get me wrong. You but... just can't bond with us the same way. <laughs> it's, it's a good thing the lights are low. If you turn the lights on, it'd be a different story. <laughs> well, we'll talk about it. We were going to talk about our gym days and stuff, but, uh, Anyway, Imperial Drag is here. Screw Eric Skodas, and we're getting back to the phones. <laughs> Dave, 16, you're on the love line with Imperial Drag. All right, how's it going, boys? Hey, hey. fine, thanks. All right, I've got this problem, and it really sucks bad. All right, me and my girlfriend, you know, we're sexually active, of course, and all that kind of stuff. And um, sometimes it just happens to be so where I just can't get myself up, like the general up. And... She sometimes tries and tries and tries and whatever, and it just, nothing will happen with me. But on the other hand, sometimes, you know, I'll be like, well, let's go take a, you know, half hour break out of our day, you know. And I just need a little bit of help or something. I don't know if there's something wrong with me or what. All right, let me ask the guys in the band. Eric, any, any How trouble you this way? What's Dave, that? 16. 16? Yeah. I would just. I would chalk it up to uh, general fear. How, how long have you actually had sex? How, how long have you been active? Active, yeah. About six months. Yeah, you see, it's you, 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 that's one of those things you can't figure out in six months. It takes years, believe me. I'm still trying to figure it out myself. How old are you, Eric? I'm Adam, 29 and I'm married. Adam practices by himself. Yeah, yeah that's the thing. <laughs> I am like a, uh, well, I'm like the military. I drill and I drill and I drill, and one day I hope to go into battle. But so far... I've seen limited action. You're like the National Guard of sexual antics. Yeah, I actually uh, shot myself in the foot once just to get sent back home. <laughs> At least not your eye. <laughs> out of it tonight. There's the Eric that isn't here. There's the Eric that is here. Yes. And I've been swapping in with Roger all night. Sorry, well, Roger. I want to know if our caller uh, exercises on a regular basis. <clears throat> well, I try to exercise with her. I did before. No, no, no. Are, 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 you, are you athletic? Oh, yeah. I play baseball, whatever. I play, do the sports and stuff. Smoke a lot of pot? Huh? Smoke a lot of pot? I used to, but I kind of gave that up just because yeah. I want to have kids and I smoke my fair share of beaners and stuff. Are you doing anything else? Did LSD a couple times. That's it? Yeah. Not drinking much? No, not much. Okay. But see, that's the thing. I think that's what I gotta do before I. No, well, no, 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 no. All right, all right, all right. You gotta learn to relax naturally. Yeah, just anxiety, nervousness makes all that not yeah, work. Yeah, man, I got finals coming up in school. You think that has anything? That to do could with have it? a lot to do with it. And, right, and nervousness, also, man. concern that it's gonna that the erection's not gonna be there is enough to make it not be there. Yeah, and let me give yeah. you some let me give you some strategy, Dave. 
If it's not working, it's not working. It's like you ever watch the Olympics during the powerlifting? They do the they do the uh, now pardon the pun they do the clean and jerk right, and the guy gets all psyched up and he slaps he slaps a talc all over himself and he yells and he goes to the bar and he yanks he gives it a good hard yank he gets it up but if he can't get it up boom he drops it and he walks away. That's what you have to do. You just got to drop it and walk away. If you can't get that thing over your head, you got to drop it and walk away because it's not going to happen. But then she wants to kick my ass. Well then that's screwed. Yeah, I mean, she it, has, she's got to be patient. I mean, if she yeah, if she that, if she likes you enough, she'll she'll uh, you know. That's give probably you time. the reason that you're having such trouble with this is that she takes offense to it. You got to understand. You got to be sensitive to the fact that she believes that it's because of her you're having this problem. That she takes it as an offense that you somehow are not attracted to her. God knows what that she is doing something to cause this. You need to reassure her, and she needs to reassure you that you that it's okay. Drew, has ever happened to you? How, all right, I'll, let me rephrase that. How many times has this happened to you? <laughs> well, it ha- it it happens. It, it uh, on average, it happens to almost all men at some time. It happened to me once. Yeah, at some time it happens to all. And there was no all. there was no rebounding. That was it. Soon as I got it into my my skull that it wasn't going to happen, then from that point on, I felt felt like a paraplegic. I had no feeling. From the waist down. As a matter of fact, my <laughs> penis went from its normal, just sort of medium dangly thing to actually retract it. It, it actually came sucked in, up into your body cavity. It sucked up, <laughs> yeah, I had to go. This is a visual, but I had to hold my nose and go <laughs> just to get it to pop out. It, it it actually went into hibernation like a like a turtle's head. It wasn't my penis. I had no feeling anymore. I could do nothing with it. It was someone else's penis at that time. And I was just. So you were possessed by the spirit of someone else's. Parents, right, and I just sitting there that praying point. that this guy would get a boner, <laughs> but apparently this guy was uh, was uh, getting a uh, uh, surgery or something. Watch a lot at of movies time. about Vikings, Dave. That, Do something, you know. All right, Dave. Fantastic, Rhonda, nineteen. You're on the love line with Imperial Drag. Hi. Hey. Well, being keepers of testosterone, I thought you could help me out. All right. Um, I am in love with my best friend, and I have been for a couple of years now, and he knows this. He's known this for a long time, and he also knows I'm trying to get over him because he's engaged, and he wants my help writing his wedding vows. Well, so he knows I'm trying to get over him, but he's got this irritating subconscious thing going on where he'll, like, we'll be walking down the street, and all of a sudden he'll tell me how good he was in bed last night and how wonderful she enjoyed it, or he'll... um bring out her sexy lingerie or the love letters he's writing to her, and he knows that I'm trying really hard to get over loving him because he knows I do. Why do you consider this guy your best friend? Well, he he doesn't do it in a malicious kind of way. You know what? There is no nothing other than an abusive, <laughs> malicious yeah. way to do no, things like he's this. Not, he's not, no. he, he Rhonda, doesn't mean to do the, this. The kinder no. it appears, the more pernicious it is, the worse it is. But see, he doesn't realize he's doing it. W- look, he does it. He Look, yeah. when he goes and gets out her lingerie... <laughs> He knows he's doing it. Well, he's asking my opinion on whether. Or not. Oh, please, Rhonda. <laughs> you are so uh, smitten and so blind that you're willing to forgive his every disgusting maneuver. He's rubbing this in your face. He, he's <laughs> you know, really well, terribly you know, he abusive. Is, he is, and I, and I, I called him on it too. You know, I says, you know, you have hurt me enough, and that sucks. But he continues to do it, and he. Tr- no, I no, he you can, you continue to go back for more. No. Yes. Well, he's my best friend. I, I don't know why you consider him your best friend. This oh. guy is not keeping your interest in mind when he does this stuff. Best friends should be concerned about other their friends' feelings. <laughs> if, y- did you ever have anything physical with him, Rhonda? Um. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I see. Hmm. What do you see? Oh. <laughs> he sees something that the rest of us don't. But... Hey, look, the guy's horribly insecure. Yes, that's, that's really it. what it is. He's he is. terribly and insecure. He's told me that he likes the fact that I can get jealous and that it makes him feel good. Could you imagine being this guy's fiance and here you guys are planning the wedding and you're well, you picking really funny, China it? patterns and whatnot. Hold on, Rhonda. And yeah. this guy is basically essentially flirting with some girl he, he had uh, some months uh, prior to getting together with you. Can I say that? Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because she's halfway across the country, too. She's what? She's halfway across the country. Uh, How old is this this idiot? Flirting with disaster here. 20. All right. This guy's an idiot. He's too young to get married. This guy's an asshole. That's more like it. He's not an asshole. Yes, he is. (laughs) I will take offense to that. Roger, is he an asshole? Oh, hands down. Yeah, Eric? It's easy. 
Uh, no, I just think he's really insecure. All right. I think that's it. But he's acting like an asshole, and that's yeah, enough for us to label him an asshole. He's not cognizant of, of what so he's... What, so what do I do? Well, you oh, are I basically a, an asset. You are hanging oh, out... Thank you. <laughs> well, come on, Rhonda. This guy's an idiot. It's operating out of, like, reflex. Yes. Rhonda. Yeah. Go find yourself a new best friend to abuse you. Uh, okay. Or, or a real, a genuine relationship. A guy that can actually take care of your needs. Oh. Well, imagine that. Imagine that. Well, Rhonda, the only reason you're with this guy is because you think there's an outside chance you may get together again, and it's not going to happen. E- either that or she needs those kinds of abusive relationships where it's just constant abuse and never really what she wants. Never true intimacy. Kind of like you, Drew. You and me? Wow. Yeah, you that's, know what you're going to get when you come in here. That's true, abuse. Yeah, Keep but coming you, in. But you enjoy it in your own sick way, don't you? I must. I, must. I, shouldn't, I wouldn't be coming here. All right, well, we're going to get to the bottom of Drew's uh, need to be spanked. <laughs> and a little more from Imperial Drag after this. One eight hundred L O V E one nine one is the phone number. I'm Adam Crowley. He's Dr. Drew. We're here with Imperial Drag. That would be Eric and Roger. And the fax number three one zero eight five four forty four fifty five. Faxes like this one. My colleagues about to read. Yes, this looks like it came from Jessica in Northern California. My boyfriend was diagnosed with AML. It's leukemia. It's medical night tonight. Eight years ago, he went into remission for six years, but he came back. I give him some, some chemotherapy, and he smokes pot. And her question is, he used to smoke pot quite a bit, stopped after learning about the cancer, takes a joint once in a while with his friends. Will this harm him? Uh, no, it won't, at least in terms of its impact on the, uh, the cancer. Also, what is the survival rate for this type of cancer and with this treatment? Um, boy, probably 20% cure rate, and I, I would suggest that I, I'm assuming they're sort of staging him for bone marrow transplant because that's sort of typically what's done for AML patients. 20%? Cure. Cure. But, but like 80% response. So they, they, it's a very treatable kind of cancer. Well, what do you mean? So you mean, you mean you can, they can. You can live five years and die. That's not a cure. Right. That's a response. If you didn't, you didn't take treatment, you'd be dead quick. So. Okay. So. He looks good for Amel's a treatable disease. Should they, but, all right. So the guy be shopping for houses or not? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> it is kind of a heavy night here. A lot of death. It's pretty heavy. A lot of uh, or- organs being transplanted. We were talking about this uh, about a half hour ago, actually, with the girl with the cystic fibrosis. And I wanted, I was saying that I want to get on a list. Just sign up. A, I want the lung list. I want the liver list. New kidney. Kidney. Is there brain? I, Can I get a brain? I was just thinking how we could do that. Can oh, we do that? Would that be nice? I know I'd probably <laughs> miss a couple of shows, but it'd probably be worth it. <laughs> I mean, for the ratings. <laughs> Yeah, maybe for my comfort level. Yeah, well, by, well, like, well, actually, I think the program director would like me to have a transplant with a 14-year-old from Orange County. <laughs> oh, no, then we just have the poor man back. <laughs> Wait a minute, what's he doing? I could get his brain. And he could use mine and go off and do carpentry. <laughs> okay. All right, we'll be back in uh, 10 seconds. Well, more Love Line with Imperial Drag. That would be... Eric Dover and Roger Manning, who've been nice enough to come in here and uh, plug the hell out of their dates. Oh, yeah, the date. <laughs> plug, plug, plug. <laughs> Going out with the Lannis Morris set for three weeks and then doing their own thing after that. Yeah. And uh, you'll be around, uh, well, you'll be touring, doing your own thing, too. I'm guessing slightly smaller uh, venues. Yeah, oh, in yeah. the summertime, we'll probably do clubs around. And you'll be in L.A.? Sure. Uh, yeah. And all over. Why not? All right. So go find. Uh, well, here's what I'm saying. If you can't find them with Alanis Morissette, then find them the second time around when they come through, which will be not too much later after the no, first probably time. Probably July around. and August. Yeah. And lo- more local clubs, better yeah. clubs, smaller clubs, and you yeah. can find them. <sighs> we're going to play another song in a little bit, but we're not going to get to that yet because we're going to get to the phones. Jimmy, 14, you're on Love Line with Imperial Drag. Uh, yeah. Um,. First of all, Adam, do you like it when, like, fans just call up and, like, totally kiss your ass? I don't know. We don't, we don't get much of that. Really? Yeah, go ahead. Adam, you're God. Uh. Yay! <laughs> you make my world go round. Uh, listen, if I was God, I'd, I'd, I'd make my penis larger. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably do, too. But, um, I called in about because I have a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah, okay. Jimmy. Yeah, um, like, maybe a year or two ago, like, uh, I noticed my nipples... Like, they got, like, a little bit, like, bigger, and they started, like, like 
well, first it was just one, and it just like got a little bigger, and it started hurting a little bit. Mm-hmm. And um, it lasted for like two weeks, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, something like that. And then it was fine. It just went away, and I didn't think of anything of it. And just a couple weeks ago. Came back. Oh, no, no. No, it's um, my friend had the same thing. Right. So, yeah, and, oh. Whoa. Oh. You there? Wait, 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 Jimmy. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. The deal is when you hit puberty, there yeah. tends to be an excessive amount of estrogen produced by the adrenal glands. And so you actually get breast enlargement. You're getting what's called gynecomastia. And 12 to 14 year olds typically get that. And a way you can really enhance that, the way it can be made worse, is smoke a bunch of pot. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know. Drew, I know, I don't buy that. Oh, that is true. Oh, that is come true. on. I oh, grew absolutely. up in, uh, I grew up with guys who basically uh, hooked themselves up to a THC intravenous every morning and they never had any. Did they, they, people would not exactly be talking about that. They tend to hide it. No, no, but I felt them, my friends yeah, up yeah. and there was nothing there. I'll tell you what pot does. It makes your boxer shorts hang out of the back of your, <laughs> I don't know if it makes your underwear right up higher, your pants go down lower, but somewhere. A in, sp- Spicoli syndrome. I'm yeah, right. Your shorts hang out, but I don't, I don't, the Spicoli didn't have big breasts, did he? Uh, All right, you you did masturbate to that scene. <laughs> I'm taking that as a yes, Jimmy. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, you get that lump in your nipple. It, I had that too. It's normal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's okay now, but what surprised me is like a lot of people had it. And... It's normal. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right, All right. Jimmy. Mm-hmm. You're Johnny Average. All right. All right. That's good. Fantastic. It gets worse if you smoke pot. You know, it's kind of weird. I just noticed when you're when you're like. Like 13 or 11 or you know, kind of young teen, 14, you worry re- uh, a ton about what's normal. Oh yes. And in yes. If anything because nobody tells you, if, you about it. If you lost your leg in a mower accident, you yes. would pray that everyone else in your block right. lost their leg too in a That's mower right. accident. That's right. But then something happens when you get into your late teens, where all of a sudden you got to be different than everybody, and then you get into your 20s and everybody's got to be different. Right. So there's this point when it's real important to be exactly like everyone else, and right. then it's real important to define yourself. It, it, the only it, problem with that is, is everyone else is defining themselves by doing the same stupid crap you're doing, right. and then you basically <laughs> just fall into a big, big bunch of idiots. <laughs> right. No, I'm serious. Welcome yeah. to the human race. Right. God well, love them. I'm going to define myself because I'm going to get my uh, my my schwanz pierced. Well, good. So everyone else got their schwanz pierced. Now, now, how did you define yourself? True. I didn't. I didn't get my schwanz pierced. You didn't? No. Prove it. No. Okay. <laughs> Guys? Yeah. We have not had ours pierced. No? As far as insofar But they as got the hair coloring in, so that it's supplanted it's, that. No, no. Eric's but I do have, I do have the, uh, the pants hanging down thing I do? going. Yeah, but that's that kind of, I mean, um, I, those are sort of hip huggers, right? Those are supposed to hang low. I thought it was from smoking too much pot. Oh. <laughs> Let's go on. What, Drew? This is an open forum where people can talk about their problems and make fools of themselves on a national <laughs> I have level. no problem with it. Yeah, you smoke a little pot once in a while, uh, right? Never. Never? Never. Mm-hmm. Roger? Which is, he smoked so much pot, he used to lactate. <laughs> right. That's right. I was going to ask questions about discharge. That's right. Really? Adam, see? What? That's what you get if you smoke a lot of pot. You get breast enlargement and discharge. You get got that is true. Lactation. When I was... Uh, 12 or 13, the same thing happened. Exactly. Except there was a, a discharge. Adam, vindication, thank you. Eric, yes. you, you, you gave? I mean, I, I gave, <laughs> I, I didn't give what appeared to be milk. It was more of a, a, a clear, know, an, a clear look. Yeah. And it, it freaked me out very badly. Wow. And th- was that from smoking pot? No, I'd never smoked pot. Not, not then anyway. So, Drew, what are you getting at? Now, wait a minute. It wasn't from smoking pot? No, I I never smoked pot until I was eighteen or nineteen years old. So uh, lactation was from the smack? No, it was from puberty. Oh, okay. You and, usually don't lactate, but it's possible. Oh, we'll hey, talk Drew, about this after the show. Wait a minute, McGruff, the uh, the uh, pot <laughs> sniffing crime dog. No, I, I I would worry that there was some thyroid problem or something else that that does that in addition to the, the breast enlargement. Did you have a thyroid problem? I, I never. Um, well, never I never went to the doctor and okay. had a check. No. Fine. You see, that's why we're here because you were a little embarrassed. I right? want you. To, actually, I was hoping we we could make up a list of all the problems, and then I could. Have all right, where else address. did sap come out of your body? Ah, uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> you're like a maple tree over there. <laughs> that's right. Anything sticky coming I, out of the? You lawn? were talking about pancakes earlier at the IHOP. Yes, yeah. <laughs> pure maple syrup. Put a spigot on it, <laughs> Patrick. Seventeen, you're on the love line with Imperial Drag. Hey, hey, um, I kind of have a problem about something. It's kind of like. For Dr. Drew, though, 
But I mean, um, you can jump in if you got ideas. But, but um, you don't have to ask them to jump in. <laughs> but um, basically, it's like this: my girlfriend's a virgin, and like she has like this family that's very fertile, and she still trips off like if she has a ki- if she will have a kid or not, if she uses birth control and we use a condom. Mm-hmm. And she wants to know if there's still like a good chance that she can get pregnant. Both the birth, both the oral contraceptive pill and a condom. Virtually zero. She's listening right now. Virtually zero. Yeah, I mean, it is zero. I mean, it, it, it's like you know, an asteroid would be more likely to hit, land in your backyard. And if you have that kid, he, he's going to be uh, the chosen one. I mean, you look at it that way. <laughs> because I it'll would. Be, it'll be a shaft of light. We'll have to visit it. Not not this gentleman. Some <laughs> some kind of shaft is going to have to visit somewhere. I mean, if if you're if you if she's on the pill and you're using a condom and she she comes up pregnant, keep the kid. Because this kid's going to come up the, the the cure to cancer. Am I right? Yeah. Disapprove right. Einstein's theories and all that. However, Patrick, what she is telling you oh, is... I, I did that earlier in the week. Oh, what, what she is telling you in her own way is that she is not ready to have sex. Mm-hmm. Okay, she is not ready. Oh, okay, she is... Yeah. She is Patrick. What, I mean, I think she's ready. No, I mean, she, pa- she is not ready. You, if thought, she is you that, thought she was ready when she was 12, too, Patrick. If she's that anxious, if that's what she's focused on about something that, that is really ridiculous, it's because she's either unwilling to admit to herself or to you that what she's really anxious about is having sex at all, and she's uncomfortable with it. Okay, Drew, I'm going to take a counterpoint here. All right, go ahead. Uh, guys, back me up on this one. Maybe. No matter where I go. Okay. She has a fa- she's a teenager. Yep. She yeah. as she's uninformed as as are mm. a lot of the teenagers okay. out there hence the show love line. Mm-hmm. Her whole family, cousins and aunts and whatnot are putting these kids, litters of kids out mm-hmm. and she's nervous. She's no doctor, she's no birth control expert. She doesn't know what to believe. She she thinks there's some sort of family curse and that's what it is. It's possible that's the case, but I think it's that she's uncomfortable with the whole situation. Mm. Okay? All right, thanks a lot. Uh, All right. All right, let me ask you a question. First off, uh, I'm going to call Eric Roger and Roger Eric again, but Eric, how old were you when you lost your virginity? 14. 14? Yes. And I don't, I don't think you, I, I would call it losing more virginity. It was a fiasco, the whole thing. But technically you lost it. You talked about this last time you were right here. Yeah, I think so. Yes. Did did you go outside the family or? Uh, no, I stayed, I stayed inside the family. (laughs) (laughs) The comfort zone is much a fiasco. (laughs) And, what happened? Did you, did you drip a little sap on she, her? She was a <laughs> she was a, a huge Janis Joplin fan. Oh, really? Yeah. So you're like so her Bobby McGee. She wound up being a, a softball player in college, if you know what I mean. Turn lesbo on you, huh? You, you ever you ever get the feeling that maybe not that you sent her hurtling toward lesbianism, but you gave her a little put a little kickstart. I, I I think I probably goaded her in that direction. Had you been a little better? Oh yeah. Had you uh, not not? I was scared to death. Right. Yeah. And you were her first, were you her first experience? And then I was, uh, well, we won't go into that either. I, I was her first? No, I think I was her like 32nd. Oh, really? She was 13. So you, all right, so you can't take the blame. Sure. All right, so you did <laughs> cause her to go into lesbianism. Uh, no, I think, uh, she had outside influences. Okay. Other softball players and all things right. of that nature. Organized sports. <laughs> Nothing gets a woman to like another woman faster than the organized sports. Roger? Wait my, a minute. My age? Yes. 19. Huh? Is that when you lost it? Yeah. Really? Yeah, it was one of the oddballs. So you're saving yourself? No. No. I, I was just being polite. You're trying to get <laughs> rid you. of it since you're 14. Thank you. But no one would have you. Uh, no, actually, I found out later that lots of people would have me, but I wasn't aggressive enough. I all was, right. But, you know, we've shot. all heard that sob story. Everyone's real nice. I and, No, I know how that works. I talked to plenty of women I went to high school with, like, at the reunion and stuff. And like right. the 10-year reunion. Oh, oh, yeah, I would have taken you. Right. Oh, Adam. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure, I would have taken They're lying. They wouldn't have had you. Okay. Yet. Well, no, this this was this was guy talk. This wasn't from girls. Oh, wait a minute. Now I'm getting confused. Guys overhearing mm-hmm. girls or hearing from no, girls? No, guys, f- girls telling guys that if I had only asked, it would have been there right for the picking. Drew, do you know what's going on here? We're going to the next call. Oh, okay. That's a good idea. <laughs> Too hairy wait, wait, I, have to, I, ha- I do have to add, though, although it was at the age of 19, mm-hmm. she had a mohawk, so I win. Really? Is yeah. That, do you want to a little, like, punk rock? And mohawk downstairs or upstairs? Both. Wow. <laughs> what kind of uh, moose do you use for... <laughs> Brittany, uh, for a downstairs mohawk? Yeah. That's a good question. Brittany, 17, you're on Love Line. Yeah, I really don't have a problem. This is more directed to Eric and Roger. Oh, good. I just wanted to say you have humongous fans down here. 
Like, me and my friend have been following you guys since Jellyfish. Oh, wow, you. and where, do you, where are you located? Um, Thousand Oaks. <laughs> right on. Oh, yeah, next oh. to Ojai, where you live, Roger. <laughs> Thank you. And we kind of have this obsession with you, Roger. We've named your band after our band after you. We've, like, written songs about you. You're just, like, everywhere. It's like Roger this and Roger that. What's the name of the group? Huh? What's the name of your band? Roger's Penny. Pinwheel. Oh. Roger's Pinwheel? Roger's Pinwheel. <laughs> you guys playing out? Yeah. Well, I mean, in the area. Well, you didn't want to start a group called Eric's Sappy Nipples? Well, no. so it just started like that, but it didn't <laughs> ring very well. <laughs> but, no, it's just, it's kind of a weird thing, but it's a big obsession thing. And everybody knows, oh, those are those girls, and everybody's asking, who's Roger, who's Roger? I'm like, oh, this is... This guy from Jellyfish, I was like, who the hell is that? But it's just like our thing. Now, why why did you pick up on Roger? I mean, just look at him. Okay, you're with him right now. I'm, look I at look him. like I'm the most, I'm the one who most resembles Yoko Ono in the band. So. <laughs> I'm <laughs> looking at him. He's, he's all right, but, whole, huh? He's got this whole thing about him. It's just, it's like unexplainable. Oh, Adam, Adam missed it. Oh, seriously, turn, stand up for a second. I'm a five on, foot please, six Roger. dynamo. Yeah, turn around. You didn't for see a my second. shirt, did yeah. you? Oh, oh, uh, in fact, I thought Drew was going to comment on my shirt. <laughs> Hug therapist. Yeah, we, we were doing oh, a theme. Oh, that's that beautiful. Say? I can't tell. You got you know, to listen. It, it was the, the jellyfish, like, um, Hugging chokers for... and, and, like, Hug belly Hugging. button, like, high shirts and, like, Oh, the Bobby buttons. Sherman look I was sporting? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I always thought it was a little more David Cassidy, but all right. <laughs> yeah, he's cute. I'd do him. He's just, like, way beyond everything. I just wanted to let you know that there's people out here who have this extremely big, big thing about you, and it's... Well, although I, I'm in a band and I play in front of a lot of people on a regular basis, uh, it's good to actually hear that somebody... Uh, oh, it's not even like you're a big so, rock thank star. You. And... Hey, hey, Brittany. Uh-huh. What about shifting a little focus over to the good folks at Loveline? Oh, yeah. What about me? I'm in here two two hours a night busting my ass. You guys rule for having Roger and Eric on there. <laughs> oh, for Christ's sake. <laughs> there you sake. go. Guilt Just by association. That um, congratulations on your marriage, Eric. Oh, thank you very much. And happy birthday to Roger. <laughs> thank you. Except it's kind of late. And that Tim says hi. Okay. All right. You done? Um, sure. You sure you don't have any love problems? Uh, unless you call it that, no. <laughs> I'd call. I think she has just sort of an overall problem. But, <laughs> well, wait a minute. When was your birthday? Because I just had my birthday. 27th. Oh, mine was May 27th. Are we soul brothers? <laughs> we certainly are. That's weird. That was on. Uh, You're talking about keeping that? it in the family. Monday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Gemini, right? That's right. No, no, he was <laughs> up more it. than twenty-seven. He's not Gemini. <laughs> you know, Ann got me a tremendous boob cake. You didn't get any kind of boob cake, did you? Who gave you boob cake? Producer. Is that a figure of speech? No, producer Ann went to this. Oh, I'm sorry. Everybody, <laughs> including <laughs> engineer Ann. Mike. Producer oh, Ann did the full leg work, though. <laughs> the whole love line uh, behind the scenes. Engineer Mike, Sherry, and me. Lisa. Oh, and you. Yeah. Was it like a mono boob? Was right, it just, just one big look, boob as a cake? Or? Everybody but me chipped in to get me this cake that essentially was done by, you know, those professional uh, p porno cake right. builders? Right. Two big boobs. It looked like that uh, power station out in uh, San Onofre or wherever that is. <laughs> on the way down to San Diego? Right. Two huge, <laughs> well, on the way down to Mexico for me, but I guess right. you, know, you go through San Diego. Two, Tijuana to be more exact, but two big jugs on there and they like spray painted it and they had you know i hated to eat it i was, mean it was mixed emotions how was the maple issuing, syrup hmm? the smoke issuing from the nipples oh yes Something it was like a reactor it, it was it was an awesome uh, my best birthday ever <laughs> well okay i didn't get any sex but uh and i hear it's gonna put up a little uh, around christmas time so we'll uh We'll remedy that. Okay, so now we have a song called The Man in the Moon. You guys want to say something real quick about that before we play it? No, just close your eyes and drift off into space. The Man in the Moon. That is Imperial Drag's latest off of their latest CD, Imperial Drag. And we'll be back with more Imperial Drag after this. Hi, this is Bush. You listen to Love Lines. <laughs> hey, Engineer Mike. What the hell's going on in there? Is that it? Really? Uh -huh. <laughs> 
right. I just saw you shaking your head, Mike. I thought you'd like uh, uh, spilt uh, some of your broma salsa or something on the board. <laughs> All right, uh, let me get the phone number. 1-800-LOVE-191 is the phone number. Fax number 310-854-4455. We're sitting here with Imperial Drag. That would be Eric and Roger. Both nice guys. Look at them. They come in here. They behave. They look nice. So far, uh, no farting as far as I can tell. Not, not until we leave the station, actually. Very good. Very good. And, and I may have another uh, honey mustard belch coming up, Drew, oh. so you may want to... Poise yourself for that. <laughs> You've got some delightful scents coming out of you without the belching. Thank you very much. Back to the phones we go. Jeff, 18, you are on Love Line with Imperial Drag. Hi. Um, I got a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah? Um, I go to school in a small town, and um, so far I've been able to fool people I'm homosexual, mm -hmm. and it's quite dangerous where I live. Really? And... Um, I mean, if people found out you were you were gay. Yes, they. Wow. Um, well, people are starting to think now, because I've started to hang out with a crowd mm -hmm. that is homosexual, mm -hmm. and I've had um, my friends are defending me, and I feel really bad because I blind my friends, mm -hmm. and um, I've had threats, and I'm just. It seems to me. Every day at school. Look, it seems to me, in the interest of prudence, you ought to keep lying. Got to keep lying. I, I mean, wouldn't you guys say? I mean, I, 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 if it means your safety. I've been doing it for yeah. years. And until if, he can move out. Yeah. I mean, until you can get out of there. And if you can still have relationships with other gay people, which is great, and still can maintain a, the, the appearance of not, if that is what's necessary for your safety. Well, let me let me you ask a few it. important questions now, Jeff. Uh, first off, where are you calling from? Um, Oregon. Or really? I, I thought, well, I guess it depends what part of Oregon you're calling from, because they can go from... Packwood to pack pack and pack, no no no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Senator Packwood oh yeah all right Bob Packwood right right oh he's from Oregon right oh he's he's felt up everyone in Oregon Jeff if <laughs> Packwood ever put his thumb in your ass uh, no. no no I'm just saying you're one of the few all right sit down that they they have conservative trends there that oh okay mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's I, I didn't great. intend to trigger that little flurry. Alcoholic, uh, all right, all right, congressman all right. yeah, can yeah. molest everybody, but they're still very conservative over there in Oregon. All right, Jeff, let me ask you a question. Two okay. questions. First off, you said there's a gay crowd. Well, not, not in the town. Mm. Where okay. would the gay crowd be? Well, I, I met him working and he, he lived in another town and he's quite a bit older than me. And he was starting to introduce me to some of the gay community around my area but not not in your town no i so far as i know there's nobody that's came out to me mm. and really I figured if i started well, well wait a minute let me ask you a question but then you've I'm, never you've I'm never gonna... you've never come out to anybody else either because no, it's such i, it's I such gotta ask a there. mathematical question here jeff if you're the only gay guy in town who are you getting it on with nobody <laughs> oh so you still is your behindment intact yeah oh, okay. I, I exercise it regularly <laughs> so you've never had a physical experience with another man? Not with a man. I I I have with a female. All right. And so Jeff, you're not you're not homo. He, but he is homo. He he's half he, mo. Maybe he's on maybe his way. Maybe half mo. He's intending full mo. All right. He's on. Mm. <laughs> okay. But Jeff, you don't know. Maybe maybe you're not going to like it. Believe me, I could change your mind about men. <laughs> Five minutes in the broom closet with Adam, you'd be you'd be, you'd be running for the for the broads. <laughs> Jeff, you've never been with a man. No, I haven't. Adam, before what? before you had been with a woman, did you know you were heterosexual? I had some notions okay. about it. All I, right, I, but it's the jury's the, no, still out. Let I me tell you. That. I understand that, but <laughs> but Jeff so Jeff is in about the same position right now. Okay. All right, Jeff. All right, so you've decided on men, even though you've 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 not taken one for he, a test he, ride. He is yeah. clear that that's what he's attracted to. Okay. So you got to get out of that little crappy town. I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Harder said than done. But don't, yeah, I'm with Drew. Don't say anything. <laughs> There's no reason to come out of the closet when you, you haven't even had an experience anyway. I mean, well, this is a hypothetical I, I, no, closet no, 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 you're stop, in. Stop going back to that. He If he wants to assert himself clearly to his peers and to his friends so they can understand him better, really accept him more as who he is and how he sees himself, that's understandable, but it, if it means your safety, there's no point in it. You're just buying time so you can get out of there. Okay. All right. There's a lot of ignorant okay. people out there. Oh yeah. Absolutely. All right, Jeff. Okay, thanks. All right, stay in a little longer. 
Okay. As a matter of fact, I'll meet you there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ever beat up any fags? <laughs> yeah, with my long, <laughs> prissy hair. Yeah, Roger, you look like the kind of guy who'd like uh, kick a little gay ass every once in a while. I mean, it's it's hard for me to even joke about that, actually. I mean, that's, yeah. that's like, I, I can't believe people sometimes. I, mean, that's, that's, I, I, I feel it, for this guy. I mean, he's like he's like trapped in this small community, and he just wants to be himself. Well, you know what I think it is? I think there's a there's a certain segment of society that just has to pick on people that are different. Mm -hmm. And it took us a while to sort of wean them off the... I mean, not that they're completely off the blacks or the Hispanics or whatever, but we've sort of wean them a little bit off of that. I mean, certainly since uh, more than it was like in the 50s and stuff like that. Now they've gone, well, we got to stomp ass, so let's yeah. look around. Hey, look at that homo over there. Let's go get him. And eventually, uh, hopefully we'll wean them off the gay community and, and on to some other community. It's like low, low human nature mandates that you have to have an enemy always. Right. There's at least 3% of the male White male population must kick somebody's ass at all times. And I think in Oregon, it may be as high as 7 or 8%. There you go. All right. So it's no longer cool to beat up on people who are different colors. We'll just move on to the gay community. Jacob, 18, you're on the love line with Imperial Drag. Hi there. Hey. All right. Um, well, I got one quick comment real quick before I get going. Um, Dr. Drew, mm. what mm. Exactly, are you a doctor of? Because I've heard about a million people come at you with a million different pr problems. I'm, an, I I'm, I'm a general internist. Just a, and I, uh, but I run a department of medicine at a psychiatric hospital, and I run their addiction services. So I have oh, okay. Because I mean, I've just heard people come at you from all different angles, and yep. sure there's a connection. There's a connection. And Adam, you deserve a PhD. I just don't know in what. I just know you you deserve one. I should get just a sort of general one. Yeah. Just yeah. For, and know, we're waiting PhD to have of love line or whatever. Yeah, I'm going to go down to one of the local junior college. You know, all the work I've done on think, their behalf think, over the I, yeah, months. I just think it would be just like the Wizard of Oz. It'll just give you the doctor of thinkology, and that's it. Definitely. If I only Professor. had a nard. <laughs> Thank you, Beavis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was saying nards long before those two on MTV. All right, okay, Jacob, what's your question? Well, no, okay, my girlfriend, who um, we've been, like, fine. for. We've only been going out for, like, three months now. Actually, it's almost four. Um, but we've been fine for that time, but, um, she's grown like more and more insecure. I mean, she's never really been, um, she's never had like high self-esteem. Um, she's always kind of fallen in with the wrong guys. And like, she's told me that finally she's glad that she fell for somebody else. Cause I guess I don't classify as a bad type of guy when it comes to her opinion. And, um, she, whenever I'm, we have a lot of mutual friends. I mean, like most of our friends, I mean, we're, we're just, most of our friends are mutual friends. And so whenever I'm talking to a girl that is like a mutual friend, she thinks I'm flirting when really, I mean, I'm, I don't even think about that. I don't even think that, I don't consider it actual technical flirting. All right, all right, you're mind. clean. Yeah. We got that. All right, she, she has a little self-esteem problem. A and though she probably has difficulty sustaining this kind of a relationship, and so she has to find something that she can attack and potentially dismantle this relationship through. I hope not, but. Well, that, that's what your instincts are going to be. Yeah, because, well, I know she had, um, boyfriend a little while ago and she walked into her room and um her best friend and him were going at it and they were in there for, yeah. uh, not and, going at it i mean they were like and that's actually more the kind of relationship she's probably comfortable with she, uh -huh. saw, she has sought those out constantly now she's got somebody who actually is willing to offer her true intimacy and it is going to get her in touch with some very heavy feelings that she's not going to be comfortable with so i think it's like i mean do you think it would be overcomable yeah, I, I think it's I, well. It's hard to tell for a given individual, but yeah. But here, here's the deal. It has to do with with her more than Jacob because we get these calls all the time. The guys, yeah. what if I told her this? What if I promised her that? What if I didn't talk to any of her friends? What if I this? What if I that? But when you're that way, you're that way. It's it's yeah. her deal. You can't right? change your your true human nature. You right. know, if your nature is to flirt with someone, then you should be allowed to do it. I mean, without leading them on to something. If your nature is to be friendly, but that isn't even his. He, she she is perceiving it. She's projecting all this on. Right. Yeah, she's laying a lot of guilt on him. She's and, insecure. Yeah, and she'll always be insecure. And it doesn't matter who he talks to. It's not his activity that he needs to curtail. She's the one who needs to get a little bit of help. I don't want to sound like we're we're picking on her, but Jacob sounds like a decent enough guy, and frankly, he didn't sound like he posed mu much of a sexual threat. <laughs> I just got that vibe. I don't know if you guys picked up on that, yeah. but it's, yeah, he that's... sounded 
He sounded like sounded a safe like a nice enough guy, guy and yeah. a sincere enough guy. And it's she that needs to do the work. Yeah. Well, she's guys with me? Absolutely. In touch with all that stuff. And maybe him for picking somebody like that. Oh, yeah. He screwed up for picking her, but uh, that's a whole nother show, isn't it, Drew? Mm -hmm. All right. Back with more Imperial Drag after this. Phone number for Loveline, 1-800-LOVE-191, 1-800-568-3191, fax number 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Carolla. He is Dr. Drew. They are Imperial Drag. That would be Eric Dover and Roger Manning, both nice enough to come in here and talk to us tonight on Loveline. They're going out on tour uh, starting Friday, playing uh, with uh, Alanis, who, who uh, hand-picked Imperial drag. That's what we were told. Now, I'm just playing devil's advocate here. But could she have picked you guys because you were so horrible that, you <laughs> know, would it make her look good? Right. She didn't want anyone to come out like I used to do stand up. God forbid some guy would come up and tear up the room and then I'd have to go up. I was always hoping the guy, the guy, you know, bombed out there before I went out there. Well, actually, the truth of the matter is, and I'm going to be a guy for a second here. I think she's, uh, Got the hot she's, for one uh, of us. Yeah. She's, she's not named her, <laughs> her band after you, though. <laughs> she, no, Roger. She's not Alanis Morissette featuring Roger's Pinwheel. Yeah. I got a feeling she could kick all of our asses. So, <laughs> have you have you had a chance to uh, hang out with her? Not yet. No. Looking forward to doing yoga with her. Oh, she do that? We're gonna make her. You know, I mean, she, I mean, she's good in the bed. You know, she can go, she can do that uh, uh, the comma uh, that the lotus thing where she can crank her foot up over behind her head thus allowing but <laughs> deeper stuff you know drew could you help us out on this one no <laughs> hey drew don't be so tight <laughs> be stuck up drew we're having a good time here all right we're going back to the phones amanda 18 you're on love line with imperial drag hi hey um imperial drag your concert on Friday night, I'm there, dude. Right okay. on. In Portland, Oregon. We'll see you there. Yeah. You, you got your tickets? Yeah, I got my tickets. They sold out in um within like five hours. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, come up and say hi afterwards. Your first concert. Yeah, like they're going to let me up there, dude. No, we'll hang out outside by the, uh, look for the crappy little rental van. Yeah, near crappy the Coke machine. Van. All right, I'm going to be there with four of my girls. <laughs> bring your okay. posse. Yes, bring your bitch farm. Yep, I'm going to bring my bitch farm. That's right. We're all coming out. We're going to fucking party. And we're going dancing afterwards. you got to come dancing with us. What's your love question? My love question. Okay. I've got a boyfriend, right? Which that doesn't matter if you guys are going to be there. I know that sounds rude, but you're only going to be in town for one night. Anyways, <laughs> I've got a boyfriend, and um, he's really cool and stuff. And it's not like we're totally committed to each other, but we're just really cool with each other, right? Well, we're supposed to be totally committed to each other. Well, it's the nineties. Yeah, it's she 90s, she exactly. is not committed. Yeah, like but Amanda, exactly. Amanda, Amanda's not committed, right? Amanda's not totally committed to sanity either. But go <laughs> ahead, Amanda. I'm totally committed to sanity, dude. Um, yeah, I do stuff with my girlfriend, and I want to tell my boyfriend that I do stuff with my girlfriend because I want him to be a part of it. Right. Uh -huh. um, so what do I do? How do I tell? Oh, him? Hold on a second. Hi, I like to have sexual relationships with my girlfriend. Do you want to join us? That, that'll well, well, do. <laughs> first, first of all, knowing him, do you think that's going to bum him out, or do you think that that he would be able to handle that? Um, I think if I think at first he'd think it was um totally cool, but I don't know if he'd go for it because he'd think of it as cheating. Right. Yeah. Well, every time I listen to Love Line and this question comes on, it's basically the old you know it's exciting at first, but then people's feelings ultimately get hurt, and this right. is where I hand it over to uh, Drew and Adam. Yeah, but Roger, don't feel like you have to uh, work the party line here. You tell us exactly what you feel. I mean, you you hear us talking about that, and we talk about that when when people are talking about fiancés and husbands and wives and stuff like that. But if you're 18 and uh, Amanda, we'll see what it is. is Amanda, it? you're kind of nuts, right? No, we'll see. You're it's free like spirit. A life kind of thing. The what? You know, it's like I go to college and I'm a really good girl, and he's like my good girl boyfriend, you know. But it's like. Then I go out on the weekends and stuff and say, oh, honey, I'll see you tomorrow, you know. And then I have my bad boy, bad girl life. Okay. You know? Amanda, uh, Amanda, please. All right, all right. I'm putting her on hold because she can't relax. She's obviously a uh, coffee achiever. I'm guessing junior college <laughs> is where she goes, but we'll, we'll find out whether I'm right or wrong in a few seconds. We put Amanda on hold. Here's what I'm saying. Amanda has no intentions of marrying this young chap. 
Right. And this chap, if he knows what's good for him, or he's listening to the show, should have no intention of marrying Amanda. This is a young, fun relationship. Right. Now, Drew is uh, conservative, as he may appear to be, does not necessarily uh, snub his nose at, at this type of thing when it's a a fun relationship. Right, a lot of people that... are careful with their sexually transmitted diseases and whatnot. Right, you put on a condom, go to town. We we give this advice to people who are getting married, who are already married, well, saying or, if you or, really care about the relationship, this whatever. may screw if, it up. If they don't want to get hurt as a result of the relationship falling apart or the consequences of having somebody else in there, God knows what kind of emotions might get raised, um, then we say not to do it. But if they really don't care... They're not emotionally connected with these people, then, you know. This relationship is like a sandcastle. The tide will roll in at the end of the day and take it away and eventually flatten it out from the sand from, from whence it came. All right, Byron. This is very <laughs> poetic. Yeah. This is, this, there's no, there's no, uh, concrete or reinforced steel here. Amanda? Uh huh. You're, you're still with us, right? Yeah. All right. Am I right? This yeah. is fun. So, so, so tell him. Should I tell him or should I just let tell it Tell him. Go? He'll be up for it. You think he'll be up for it? Yes. Okay, Adam, right? Okay. Adam, um, my friend Casey wants me to ask you a question. Why do you masturbate so much? Can I join? And can she join? <laughs> well, see, if you joined in, then it wouldn't be masturbation. <laughs> it's like, awesome. it's like saying, too. I like see, to Casey's sing. my girlfriend. All right, listen. Like, <laughs> listen. You can't listen. fly solo with a co-pilot, can you? You cannot sing uh, a cappella with a band behind you. That is true. <laughs> well, there's an analogy of the <laughs> evening. <laughs> I'm going to go oh. home and have a lo- nice long cadenza. You, you guys are going to have a great time with Amanda on the 31st, I'm sure. All right, Drew, you got another call picked mm-hmm. down? Right, we've had enough of her. C- uh, wait a minute. Cabe. Yes. Also from Portland. Cabe, 25. You're on the love line with Imperial Drag. Hi. Hey, when is when are you going to Portland? We'll be there Friday. Friday, Friday night. Yeah. Right. At La Luna, where? Uh, what's the name of the Rose Garden? Rose, Rose Garden. Garden. All right, the heart of downtown. Hey, okay. Hey, Cabe. Yeah. Give us that stoned laugh you do so well. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> right on. Hey. Um. Okay. Here's my deal. I have yeah. a roommate who's bisexual, and he's been coming on to me lately. And my situation is that it's his apartment, and I'm sort of like subletting the closet just for really about as cheap as I can get. And I feel sort of intimidated by him because uh, of the sexual advances. Uh, You're afraid he's going to kick you out? Well, that's the thing. It's like sh- if I be, there's do... got there should be some kind of law against this. I mean, it's, it seems like a sexual harassment of some type. Yeah, exactly. I can hear the story now, Cabe. The uh, bong can stay, but you're going to have to go. <laughs> <laughs> We've well, grown attached to the bong, but you we could do without. <laughs> Well, the thing is, is like, if I do go along with his sexual acts and it doesn't work out, I'm thrown out. No, you don't go along with that kind of crap. That's ridiculous. Whether, whether it's, it's somebody's advancing towards you and extorting you, basically, to manipulate their position, whether male or female, whatever it is, it's not right. And let me just work. Let me do a little math here, Cabe. Yeah. What is he charging you a month for rent? 200 200 bucks. Yeah. You gonna put a two hundred dollar bounty on your ass? <laughs> I've done it for cheaper. Wow, Cabe, you have? Well, yeah. I mean, I gotta support myself. Cabe, are you? What are you doing? Hooking? Well, I, I, that's the other thing. It's like the sex doesn't matter to me. I have no sexual drive at all since I, I'm addicted to drugs. So, so what, what are you addicted to? Heroin. Okay. Okay. So. So that's the thing. It's like right, okay. ma- the sex doesn't matter to me at all, and it's just. And he's got this thing about the bisexuality that I f- uh, sort of feel like he's like got some kind of control on his, his sexual emotions, where he can have sex and and not like ruin a friendship or a. That's which is ridiculous. Cave, you have huge problem here. Big problem. Well, number one is the uh, drug. Besides the drug, yeah, I know yeah. that. I mean, you're you're you're. It's like rearranging the deck chairs in the Titanic here. <laughs> you're, 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 you're well, all full of st- I think you topped the acapella one there, yeah. Drew. And uh, it, it, you know, you're rationalizing about issues that are just ridic- you know, ridiculous. Ridiculous. Cabe, ridiculous. Cabe, listen. Yeah. Please. Yes. Here's the deal. L- yeah. Let's go. Let's go in order of importance here. First, uh, the heroin, because after the heroin, all the other stuff is just a, a offshoot of the heroin. You understand? No. Um, and, and also, if you're hooking and you've been abused that badly, I mean, were you abused when you were a kid too? No, no, I had a, I had a great childhood. Just I got addicted to heroin. And you've just been doing whatever to stay on the smack. 
yeah. All right. So do you want no, to get? I'm trying to do whatever to get off of it. Yeah, but you're staying on it. I mean, meanwhile, the the calendar pages well, are turning. Yeah, well, have you ever been addicted to heroin? It's kind of hard to get off it's of it. Very hard to get off. But staying off it is really the hardest part, and you have to get some kind of treatment, or there's really zero probability of you getting off it. There's some data out there that suggests that heroin addicts that don't get into recovery by the time they're 30 do not live to 50. Okay? Mm-hmm. That's the fact. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I mean, the, you know, I don't need the scare tactics. I know I need to get off it. Get some treatment. All right, Kay. Yeah, yeah that's, and, a, and, and that's y- another thing. Can I ask the doctor uh, to yeah, do that? Yeah. Okay, here's here's a uh, problem about just on the heroin aspect. Mm-hmm. How do you get into a methadone clinic when you can't even afford your fix for the day, let alone a you know three hundred and sixty dollar a month? I, I don't know what meth what the laws are like in in Oregon, but uh, first of all, methadone is no way to treat opiate addiction. Forget that. It, it's a it's a yes, my, my opinion. I knew it. I knew it. My opinion it's is more a, addicting. It's a terrible way to go, in yeah. my opinion. I mean, if if you are if you are hopeless and there's no chance of you ever getting better, then fine, get on methadone, and that's great. I've never seen anybody taper off methadone and st- using methadone and stay sober. You you've got to get into a program. Where you're going to be in a very structured environment for a long period of time. This is a very serious disease with a lot of relapse potential and and serious medical consequences. And, but part of what Cabe needs to do is not give in to his No, he needs to get the hell out of there. He needs, he needs to get the yeah. focus on, begin to get the focus back on getting off the heroin, get out of his living situation, go somewhere where he can get better. Dave, 20, you're on Loveline with Imperial Drag. Hey, what's up? Hey. Hey, um, this question is actually for Dr. Drew. Dave. But first, uh, Adam, I've never heard you without a smart-ass comment. That's cool, though. I'm not saying it's bad. And, Drew, I've never heard you be stumped. That's kind of crazy. What happened? Was I, did I, uh, <laughs> Was he stumped and I didn't have a smart-ass comment? <laughs> no, you didn't that time, but it's cool. Well, the, 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 well, the Dave, guy was up? selling his sphincter to the highest no, 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 bidder, no. and he was hooked on smack. What do you want me to do? No, not not just that last caller I'm talking. Every time I hear it, it's, I'm, I'm saying it's cool. You always have, oh, okay. you always have some cool. He, he likes that. All right, Dave. With. Dave, let me ask you something. Yeah. Let me explain something, and tell me if you would be offended by this. Drew came in here. You guys saw this from Imperial <laughs> Drag. <laughs> Eric Roger came in drinking this Diet Coke I now hold in front of me. He drank yeah. about half of it. I reached over, not because I was thirsty, but as sort of a bonding thing. I took a sip out of it. Just you for know? the taste of it, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and what I do, when I picked it up, I took a sip out. I went to set it back on his side of the console. What did he do? He waved me off. No, no, go ahead. You finish it now. <laughs> now, would you? T- I, I'm taking a certain uh, bit of offense to this. Now, you know what I'm saying? Roger thinks I have cooties. But there's yeah, a distinct no, message here. He he, now, you guys have been... Wait, wait a minute. You guys have been sitting there smelling that breath all night. Uh, right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> I mean, would yeah. you want to put your mouth back on a can that has touched those lips? Give me a break. Is that Probably all it was? Probably not. Any other night? You, you, oh, I, look at him. Fumbling. No, 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 no. Tonight you have been uh, in in a rare form. Okay. I think well, if you lose the stubble and wear a little makeup, you'd be a little more. Basically, we're sitting here with Ren and Stimpy. I'm, I'm, I'm belching up. All right. Oh. Okay, fine. Dave, Dave very quickly. Okay, check this out. Um, with LSD, mm-hmm. do you have, is it is it a possibility that, like, say, if you have a bad reaction to it, mm-hmm. Say, say a bad trip, and um, it, can that cause more more physical damage? Say than you know someone just taking it, having fun. No, saying they see. In things. fact, the bad reactions, the bad trips, I am thankful for because that usually is what stops people from continuing to use that drug. It's the people that continually have good effects from the drug that tend to get the long term consequences because they use it more. It's really an issue of how much you, how what dose, or what period of time, how long, and what age you are that determines the long-term effects of LSD. So people that have a terrible reaction to LSD are lucky, and oh. they tend not to be the ones that have the long-term consequences. That's what and, got you to quit chasing and, the and dragon, strangely, isn't it, Drew? And strangely, people preoccupy with, oh, you know, I, I don't want to have that bad trip. As long as I don't have a bad trip, the bad trips are you should be blessed with and thankful for those. That's it. No time for phone numbers or fax numbers, just time for kudos and thank yous. Uh, Imperial Drag, I want to thank you guys for coming in here and doing a uh, bang-up job tonight, namely Eric and Roger. You'll be uh, heading off to Oregon tomorrow. Yes, we will. We wish you well, and we would like to urge everyone to get the Imperial Drag CD named Imperial Drag, so there should be no confusion. Simple enough, isn't it? And that's good with our audience, please. Just keep it simple. Dr. Drew, thanks for coming in tonight. I'm putting up with that breath. <laughs> I'm trying this... to think what to eat tomorrow night. Oh. <laughs> Honey, look, 
<laughs> oh, yeah. Tomorrow's gas night. That's flatulence night tomorrow. Be here Thursday. It's fart night. And every Thursday. <laughs> Uh, I want to thank the beautiful Lisa and the lovely Sherry for manning the phones tonight, getting us some really uh, interesting, different, uh, heartfelt uh, interesting. calls. But uh, good calls tonight. The uh, lovely producer, Ann, for doing a whale of a job tonight. The One Nut Wonder Engineer, Mike, for putting in the belt sound effects when it's when it's appropriate. And I'd like to thank myself for coming in here <laughs> and uh, basically up-chucking onto the mic, therefore... Uh, Therefore, disgusting my colleague, Dr. Drew. Tomorrow night, our guest will be no one, and that's good. (laughs) (laughs) Yummy. (laughs) And uh, Loveline will talk to you tomorrow. Somebody spank me. You've been listening to Loveline. The opinions expressed on Loveline, especially by Adam Carolla, are not necessarily those of the staff, management, or sponsors, or even the character voices. Loveline, produced by Ann Wilkins for Westwood One Entertainment.